Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm uh, Dr. Bren Stevens, Director of Athletics here at the University of Charleston. I must say, wow, what an amazing, beautiful room of people. You guys look great. You athletes really look great. How's that? You know, usually I see you sweaty in your uniforms. It is great to have everybody here. I think we have an amazing, amazing group of mentors. I don't know how we ended up getting them all here. Uh, lots of great help. But I uh, feel uh, so uh, lucky to have you here and honored. And so uh, I asked our president, the big guy here, Dr. Ed Welch, if he would mind coming over and uh, saying a few words to everyone. And then, uh, as you can see on the program, uh, we'll hear a little bit from uh, Senator Capito in just a few minutes. Feel free to get up whenever and get something to eat or drink. This is very casual, so we want you to, you know, have uh, some food and some drinks, and uh, we'll go from there. And then I'll talk to you a little bit more about how the actual networking event's going to work. Thank you. Well, welcome one and all. It's uh, exciting uh, to see you, and it's exciting to feel uh, some of the uh, electricity uh, that's in the room as I hear you talk to one another. Uh, for those of you who are fantastic uh, student athletes, uh, whom I brag about and enjoy watching and following you and uh, following your success, uh, you know that uh, uh, you are the best in the Mountain East Conference and we are proud of what you've accomplished. I would just say to you that tonight is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for you to learn from very accomplished women. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for you to uh, ask some questions of them and give you uh, some guidance. Uh, and it's a wonderful opportunity for you to do a little networking. You never know when uh, it's helpful for you to know somebody who is now sitting next to you and what they can do to be helpful to you. And for those of you who are uh, devoting your time and investing that in this evening and have come to be the uh, mentors, I would share with you that uh, after hundreds of years of my experience in higher education, that's what students think when they see me, uh, there's one thing that, that I've learned. And what I've learned is that uh, all the things that happen in uh, higher education and all those uh, athletic uh, experiences and everything that happens in the classroom, they're important and they are helpful. But what changes the life of a student and that student ever, there, ever thereafter is usually because of a comment. It is usually because of a piece of advice or a piece of a response that somebody gives them in a face-to-face -face conversation. So it's when somebody says, have you ever thought about doing X? And you hadn't thought about doing X. Or it's when somebody says, uh, have you had an internship? And do you know what that could do for you? That's what uh, you get to do for these students tonight, to say to them a word of perspective that can be extraordinarily meaningful to them. And so for your willingness to come and do that and for your willingness to accept the challenge that I just gave you, not much pressure, thank you very, very much. It means so much to us and it continues the uh, community relationship that we prize and value and happen to have that as a special feature of being located in this uh, wonderful capital city of West Virginia. Thanks to all of you for being here. Have a very productive and enjoyable evening. Thank you. As you can see, I'm very lucky I get to work for a boss who lets me do crazy things all the time. I'll say, I'm thinking about it, I have this idea, and he's like, all right, we'll let you try it. So he has a lot of trust and uh, gives me those opportunities, so hence uh, that's why we're able to pull off this uh, networking event for tonight. So uh, at this time, I'd like to move on into the program and uh, have an opportunity here to introduce our special senator. A little bit about Shelley Moore Capito. Shelley Moore Capito was elected by the people of West Virginia to the United States Senate in 2014. She is the first female U.S. Senator in West Virginia's history and was elected with the largest margin of a victory for a Republican in state history, winning more than 62% of the vote in all 55 counties. After serving for 14 years in West Virginia's second congressional district in the U.S. House, 
of Representatives, and then as a member of West Virginia House of Delegates for four years prior to that, Shelley decided to run for the Senate with the goal of becoming an even stronger voice for the Mountain State. She also saw an opportunity to restore order to, the, to a Senate stuck in gridlock for far too long. Shelley believes that the challenges of our day demand bipartisan solutions and cooper cooperation across the aisles to advance legislation that benefits West Virginia and the country as a whole. Shelley serves on the Appropriations Committee, the Energy and Natural Resources Committee, the Environment and Public Works Committee, and the Rules and Administration Committee. I think Shelley's a slacker. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, I was started reading this bio and I was like, wow, she is so busy and I know she's just coming back from, I believe, seven days overseas. This committee puts Shelley in a strong position to build on the work she began in the House and to fight for West Virginia coal, jobs, and families. On the Senate Appropriations Committee, Shelley will ensure West Virginia has a seat at the table when our nation's spending priorities are determined. On the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee, her first order of business will be passing a long-term highway bill and fighting the EPA. And on the Energy and Natural Resources Committee, she will advocate for the policies that protect West Virginia energy jobs. Shelley is committed to being accessible, proven by coming tonight, and responsive to the people of the Mountain State. She regularly travels the state to listen and meet with West Virginians. Shelley is a lifelong West Virginian, born in Glendale in the northern panhandle part of our state. She holds a BS in zoology from Duke University and a master's of education from the University of Virginia. Shelley and her husband, Charles El Capito Jr., reside in Charleston. They have three adult children, Two sons, Charles, his wife, Laura, and Moore, his wife, Katie, and one daughter, Shelley, who was a volleyball player, and a husband, uh, Colin. They've also been blessed with a grandson, Charlie, and a granddaughter, Celia. Uh, as you all know, we're very fortunate, and I feel very honored, and I want to thank uh, Coach Reed for helping me to get uh, Senator Capito here this evening. I believe she went out and hit some tennis balls today with our women tennis players, which was pretty cool. So Senator Capito, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Stevens. Thank you for your leadership here at the University of Charleston. And thank you, uh, my friend Ed Welch. Uh, he and Janet have been wonderful um, stewards of the University of Charleston, and uh, I think nothing exemplifies it more than to look in this beautiful Irma Bird gallery. I mean, I love coming in this room because uh, all of the paintings and everything just remind me of West Virginia, and, uh, and I love it. So, and thank all of you for coming. I mean, what a fantastic turnout. And I'm not going to speak for very long. That's always a big relief, I think, for everybody. Um, but I would like to say uh, just a few things. First, about me hitting with the tennis team. Thank you, ladies, for going easy on me today. I appreciate that. I learned, and I was complaining to Coach Reed, that when I learned to play tennis, we were playing in the Chris Everett era where we hit the ball really flat, we were nice, we wanted to make sure that, you know, we could all get it back and forth. That is no longer the case with the younger generation. So I'm very envious of all your games and your top spin. I wish I had it. Um, you know, I was thinking about Many of you are juniors and seniors and you're thinking about what you're going to be doing and how you're going to be able to, you know, go to move to the next step. And, uh, you know, something I've thought about, I've got a daughter who's 29, she's thought about it, my son's as well. So when you were hearing my bio, you probably thought, zoology? How did she get from zoology to the United States Senate? And I'm telling you, it has prepared me to work in the biggest zoo in America, <laughs> Washington, D.C. But actually what it was, was I, I think I told the tennis team today, I was pre-med and I spent my, my junior year, my summer, over at CAMC in the kidney dialysis unit, which back then was pretty rudimentary compared to the way it is now, to decide if I really wanted to pursue medical school, if that was really what I wanted to do. So the physicians in the room, I have great admiration for. Uh, and you know what, I just didn't think I had the right stuff. So I think today's younger people, in my view, they feel like if you're going on a certain path and the path maybe ends up not being exactly what you thought or where it's going to take you precisely, it's okay. Just pivot and try something else. You know, you know, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't end up exactly what you want. Because in a lot of cases, and probably all of your mentors here would, tell, would say, at some point in their professional life, 
They took a turn one way or the other that they didn't quite expect. So my friend over there, Diana Strong Treister, she was the YWCA, and several other women in the room have been too, but she was a woman of distinction, and she started her speech out with, how did a girl like me get to be a girl like me? So I think that's a great thing to ask when you're speed dating here later. How did you really get to where you wanted to go? And a lot of it is about networking. I can tell you, I mean, I was raised in politics, so I had that uh, added benefit. But my very first race was for the House of Delegates in 1996. I had spent 15 years before that being a stay-at-home mom, watching my tremendous athletic children, right? <laughs> we saw you a couple times across the way. And, um, but I formulated at that time what I considered, what I called my bleacher buddies. These were the moms and dads that were sitting on the bleachers with me and my husband or at the swim meets watching our kids. And what it did was it formed my network to be able to say when I decided in 1996, I'm going to try this and see. And I'll tell you exactly how that happened. I was in, a, in the, I'd been sort of talking about politics and I, and I went, I was in the gro grocery store and I ran into a friend and I said, you know, I'm kind of thinking about running for House of Delegates. What do you think? And she just looked at me and she goes, you've been talking about this forever. Why don't you just do it? And uh, good lesson there. Instead of keep talking, just do it. Just try it. And so, but I went back and really the way I was able to be successful and I was, and I won by the hair of my chinny chin chin was the network that I had formed in those 15 years staying home with my children. And we, because when you're, when you're doing that, you're not just talking about, oh, you know, how are they doing in math or, you know, what were they doing last night when we couldn't find them or I'm worried about the reading skills when they're little. You're talking about other things. You're talking about people's jobs, people's parents, people's kids, the state of the year, the state of the union, the state of the world, because, you know, there's all kinds of conversations that I formed in those network relationships that I, uh, that I formulated early in the 90s before I got the nerve myself to run for office. So that's why this is important tonight. Um, you know, you may decide that, uh, you know, you might want to be a, uh, a veterinarian. And, and, you know, we have one here that you can say, how do you get to that pathway? What's the best, you know, what are the best schools? Or what's the, how did you make that decision? And then two months from now or a month from now, you might pick up the phone and call her and say, doctor, how, help me out here. Can you help me? Can you maybe write me a rec? Can you, can you point me in the right direction? Do you need, need an intern at your, at your office? All these kinds of things, it's all about making those kinds of connections. And that's why I think this is just a fantastic uh, idea, a fantastic thing. I would say in terms of public service, if you're interested, uh, and I've talked to Dr. Welch about this many times, and we've had UC interns, but a great way to find out about public service and, uh, and that career for a woman, which I would have to say is a great career. We need more of us because we're not so stuck on ourselves that we're not going to get through the gridlock. Sorry, guys, but that's just the way it is. Um, and so, uh, you know, you can get internships. You can get internships in our, I have Mary Elizabeth Eckerson with me here, who is my uh, state director. Most of the people that work for me started as an intern while they were in, in college. They work for a month in my office or my DC office. It's just a tremendous, uh, and I'm sure Kay, I'm sure you have uh, interns in your office. It's just a tremendous way to get that slice of life. So I would uh, in invite you all, if you're interested, use us as those experiences. Internships kind of get poo-pooed in the national media like it's slave labor for people who don't want to do their jobs. I disagree. I think it's a great sticking your toe in the water and really figuring out what you want to do. Like I did when I worked at the hospital. I, I did work there for several, hi Lindsay, I didn't see you. <laughs> and I, I thought to myself, this isn't something that I can do. So there's a lot of successful women in the room. There's a lot of great information. Don't be shy. Don't be shy about asking because you know what? Every, everybody who's, all the career people that are in the room were in your chair at one time in their lives. And there is nothing more, I, I think, intimidating than looking, well, there probably is, but one of the most intimidating things to me is looking for a job and that job interview and how do you present yourself and how do you present yourself on paper. The nice thing for you all is you have so many other methods to look communicate, uh, but there's nothing's going to replace the face-to-face -face that you're going to have today. So good luck. I would say just briefly, and I, and, um, I did just return from a, an eight-day trip to the, to the Middle East. I was in um, um, Israel, 
Jordan, Kuwait, Afghanistan, and Iraq. Every day say, thank, thank God for our military because they are incredible and we are so lucky to live in this country. And I know some of you, some on the tennis team, I know I'm a little international flavor there, a lot of uh, folks from other, other countries. Uh, I hope you'll back me up that this country is a great country. And um, so anyway, there's a lot of unrest there. It's, it's, um, it's a tough place. It's a really tough place for women. I can tell you in the meetings I was in in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Kuwait, I was probably the only woman in the room. Uh, and so for us as women here in this country, uh, there is no limit. So have fun, and uh, please use me as that resource as you're going to use the rest of the folks here today. And it's so nice to see some of my friends. You know, we've always kind of we've kind of grown up together in a lot of different venues, so it's always great to see everybody. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. So I, I did not mention earlier, but uh, Senator Capito, for our student athletes that may not know, is one of 20 uh, women that are in the uh, Senate today. And so it's uh, pretty awesome to have a female senator that broke that glass ceiling. And, uh, you know, as, as a woman that does that on the athletic director side of things, there's 27 of us you know, out of about 300 Division II athletic directors. So uh, I'm honored to have my opportunity and people like Senator Capito have really made things great for all of us as well as the other people in the room. So can we give Senator Capito a nice hand one more time? Okay, so here's the plan. We, we should have about two or three mentors at every table along with three or four, maybe five athletes. What I'd like to do is uh, I think Table six here needs one more mentor, if one of you guys would mind coming over. And um, this table over here with Diane. Table five, nine, sorry. Table nine also needs a mentor. So if any of you that maybe have three or four, if you mind jumping in. So we have at least a couple of mentors at every table. So how is this going to work? It's like speed dating, except for it is speed networking. I just made that term up, so I don't know really how well it's going to work, but we're going to give it a shot, right? So the plan is, is I'm going to give you seven minutes to just chat at your table with your mentors, ladies, and ask the mentors whatever questions you'd like to ask, and they two of you. And then in seven minutes, uh, I'm going to say, okay, time's up. I'll have a little chime that will go off here, and we're going to have you go to the next table. The mentors will stay seated for the entire time. The mentees will move from table to table. So table one will go to table two, table three, to table four, et cetera. And then table 10 will go over to table 1. So eventually, by the end of this evening, you will have met every mentor, fabulous women of distinction in this room. You will have, not have had that opportunity. So we're excited about that. So uh, we're getting ready to get started. I know you've been doing a little chatting already, but uh, have fun. And uh, here we go.